You are listening to the Music Ed Mentor Podcast, where we help music educators to build, manage, and grow thriving school music programs and have long and happy careers. I am your host, Elisa Jansen Jones, and this episode is such a treat. I hope you get to sit back and just enjoy this time with me as we get to listen to one of the most inspirational speakers, teachers, performers, and mentors we've ever had on this podcast, Mickey Smith Jr., the 2020 Grammy Educator of the Year. If you've been feeling a little emotionally stunted lately, and I can't say I blame you, we are in a challenging time, that is exactly why you need this episode. Trust me here, you're going to come away from this time feeling inspired and encouraged. So sit back, relax, and soak it in. But first, a huge thanks to Smart Music for making this podcast happen. Did you know that you don't have to figure out the Smart Music platform all on your own? Smart Music offers free, comprehensive training through Smart Music Academy courses for teachers, plus free webinars all the time. If you get stuck, their Help Center has all the resources you need to get back on track. Engage your students in online assessment while keeping grading easy for you. Check out smartmusic.com to sign up for your free trial. And just a reminder, smartmusic.com slash blog is where you can access all of the show notes for our Music Ed Mentor podcast episodes, including the ones for this episode, which include important links like to Mickey's Sound 180 Educators Facebook group. So be sure to find the show notes and follow the Smart Music blog for other great articles and information from music educators like you. Now, let's enjoy this chat with Mickey Smith Jr. Hi, my name is Mickey Smith Jr., uh, Louisiana, Louisiana educator, ambassador, and most importantly, part of the noble profession called teaching. And I'm excited to be here today just to share a little bit and hopefully uh, encourage folks to discover their sound and keep on going in these unprecedented times. That that's a very simple explanation of who you are, but you're so much more than that. Will you will you tell us about Sound 180? Yeah, yeah. So so, uh, you know, again, it's always opportunities to collaborate and connect, and I'm so thankful even for this opportunity that we have right now. So thank you for the extending the invitation, the opportunity to share, and that in and of itself is what Sound 180 is all about. Uh, many years ago, I was a struggling first year teacher, but apparently, look, I masked it so well. My, my supervising teachers didn't know I was a first year teacher. So they just kind of let me flounder for the whole year. And at the end of the year, uh, my administrator comes up and says, oh my God, Mickey, I have to apologize to you. I didn't realize you were a first year teacher. And uh, we kind of chuckle about it then, but how many folks do we know who struggle in those first years and literally have no one to go to? They feel like they're in it all by themselves. Well, that's what Sound 180 has become. It's a positive, encouraging uh, community of educators. And our mission is simple. It's to help educators create a sound 180 days of classroom instruction in harmony, and at the same time, provide you with enrichment and solutions that help you teach by design and not by default, because success in the classroom is not just by happenstance. I believe it's by habit stacks, those small things done well, stacked on top of each other over time. So now we have about 2,000 members that are part of this group, and they're active, y'all. I mean, like, like when you come in, we wake up every morning together, have Wake Up Sound 180, give you the motivation. I don't drink coffee. But but my coffee is 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 my passion. It's my purpose. And each and every morning I wake up and I encourage my fellow educators to keep on going and to help those young people discover their sound. And throughout the day, uh, I go live with my, some instructions, share some practical tips. And our community does the same thing, too. So uh, it's been a great thing. So I encourage everybody, if you hadn't already come, come join the group on Facebook, Sound 180 Educators. Yeah, I love being in that group. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you for making it. It's it's a good size too, because as you said, people are really active in there and, and so willing to to help each other out and share inspiration. So thank you for for starting that. Thank you. Thank and you. I I really wanted to bring you on right now because we're, you know, at the time that we're recording this, we're about to start into the second half of what's been an unprecedented, challenging year. Mm -hmm. And we still got a long way to go 
And I know that there's a lot that's eating away at the heart of music educators right now. And I couldn't think of anybody better to help us navigate those challenges. So do you mind if we just drop in on like some of these main complaints that we're having with yeah, music teachers yeah. right now, or maybe complaints isn't the right word, but the really significant challenges that we're hearing. Absolutely. It's real. I mean, I think that's, that's important because uh, at the end of the day, I don't think folks need professional development right now as much as they need personal development. Somebody that can really see that we're, that we're all struggling. Look, and I'll raise my hand. I mean, we're, we all got things we're struggling with, but the cool thing is this, we can overcome this if we band together, you know? All right. So let, let's jump in with, you yeah. know, the biggest challenge that we're hearing right now, at least that, that I'm hearing in, in my Facebook group and stuff, which is how do we make students care? How, wow. how do we make them show up, do the work and, and actually follow through because so many are not just dropping out right now, but even the ones who are still on our rosters aren't showing up. Yeah. How do we make them care? How do we make them show up? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's so funny um, to me because I think teaching and the business world have so much in common. Um, if you see a successful business, more times than not, they have an incredible uh, ability to, to feel the pulse of their clientele, of their, of, their, of their market. And any great business, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to ask the people that they're serving. Uh, I think about Hamilton. It says, I want to be in the room where it happens. Well, I think the answers are all in the room. I call it the Zoom Zoom room. So, so like if you're on Zoom or if you're in Google Meetup, I think, I think we all need to take a step back and revisit um, what this means, not to us, but to the students. I, I had a, a young student teacher I was working with, and I was asking him about a particular class. It was a fine arts appreciation class. And he was like, oh, my goodness, uh, if I had this class, I would love it. And he just kept saying, I, I, and he meant nothing by it. Great young man. But like everything was I, I, I. And I let him finish. And I said, well, I said, all that was great. But who are we serving? And for me, one way that I've been able to find a measure of success uh, this year is simply just stepping back and asking the students, what do they expect from this experience? taking a step back and creating some parameters for their personality to come through. And I say that because the, the advantage of virtual classrooms is actually its disadvantage. See, the advantage is, is we, have this, we have these grids and these blocks and people can be muted and they can be seen on the screen, but the efficiency is actually its deficiency. And I'm doing like this because of the little grids, y'all know what I'm talking about. But the thing is, it's so efficient that those personable, beautiful, ordinary moments never happen. See, when you were in band, okay, like, like, what instrument did you play? What instrument did you play? I, I was a French horn player. Okay, I, I was gonna say it. I was gonna say it because in my house, I got two French horn players. My wife and my daughter both play French horn. I was gonna say it. So, so like in the French horn, you know, French horn section, you know, there, there's conversation that's going on. Maybe even there's a little discussion between the saxophones and the French horns, or maybe somebody makes a joke and we all kind of giggle at it. There's those little moments. And those are the moments that create the experience called band. See, see, nobody just joins band simply for the subject matter. We join band because of who we are in the experience. But in this Zoom situation, in this Google Meetup situation, it's just you. So as teachers, we have to create opportunities, not just to teach, but to reach them creating opportunities that don't just teach the subject matter, but at the same time, provide opportunities to get to know who the kids are. So one thing that I tell kids is this, you know, I'll, I'll ask them questions like, you know, what uh, my, my good friend, Rachel Maxwell, she, she's a master at this. You know, she'll ask them little random questions, but they're not random. They're specific. They touch right to the heart. What's your, what's your favorite food? What'd you eat yesterday? They may ask them questions like, what's your, what's your favorite note to play? I love asking kids that. And they're like, your favorite note? I'm like, yeah, well, if you got a favorite food, you can have a favorite note. You know, uh, what, what's, what's, what's your favorite movie or what's, what's coming out next week? Embed those little opportunities to have a personal touch to the classroom experience. And you'll, be able, you'll begin to see they'll start tuning in. Because at the end of the day, we've got to find ways to engage that aren't just with the subject matter. So we make them care by addressing things that they care about. Yeah, you make them care by showing them that they matter. 
It's got to be, it's, look, we've all been there before. When you go to that restaurant, look, look, I'm, I'm going to date myself. They had the show back in the day. It says, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came, right? Cheers, man, Ted dancing. Like that was that was the spot, right? <laughs> Everybody went to that. And they probably had the crummiest beer there. They probably, they didn't, it wasn't sophisticated. They didn't have anything fancy, but it was community. And when those folks knew that they needed somebody to lean on, that's why they went to Cheers. Now, again, I'm not advocating alcoholic beverages, band directors. Don't take me out of context. But what I am saying is this, creating an atmosphere where the kids know that they matter to you more than the song. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I had an experience um, with a with a music educator, and a child was pulled out of their program. And upon that child leaving the matter of fact, the child was pulled out of the school because there was an incident there um, that was uh, harmful to the child. The child needed to be removed from the campus. And when that educator was told that that student was leaving their campus and was given some details, that educator's first response is, "This is gonna ruin our opener for the halftime show." And see, that's the kind of stuff sometimes, and he, and this educator, I promise you, didn't mean anything by it, but their focus, their focus was still on the subject matter. What I'm trying to get across to folks today is we have to show them that they matter. Watch this. When you're in an experience where you know that you have value, you add value to the situation. We're all guilty of it. We pour into places that pour into us. So that's what my answer to in this season. Find opportunities to pour into them so that they see who they are is just as significant as what they do. Significance. You bring that up a lot. Yeah. Significance and relevance. Will you talk to me about that? Well, I, I think, I think we all have significance. Somebody um, uh, asked me about the, the Grammy uh, award that, that, that happened this year and um, asked me, I'm trying to, I can't think of the question, but it was something to the effect of, uh, do you feel special? Um, and they meant it in a loving way. And I, I explained to them, there's nothing special about me, but there is something significant about me. And I think that that's true of all of us. None of us are special, but all of us are significant. But so many of us live this thing called life, never realizing our significance. And what's the significance? Significance in this case is what I call your sound. Now, if you hear me play the sax, and I've had people in the past say, Mickey, you could, you could make a career off of playing the saxophone. And I even had a good friend of mine who's a Grammy nominee uh, for music. And he was trying to coax me out of the classroom for years. And I would always tell him, I'm like, man, I'm not into it. I said, if you think I can play the sax, I said, if you ever saw me teach, you'd see where my heart is at. And he's like, no way. He's actually the first person that nominated me for the, the Grammy award. And I mentioned that because that journey, that process was a pivotal moment for me because in, in doing this Grammy, uh, experience, I realized something. I realized my sound is not my saxophone. My sound is my unique personal significance. And we all have a significance that's as unique as our thumbprint that we possess. That's why, just like with band, it's not a competition, it's a collaborative. That's why, like, when we, when we do these opportunities and we collaborate like this, I celebrate, I get excited. I'm not threatened by that because you need me, I need you, we all need each other. I tell my students, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's all about we. Why am I saying that? Because each of us has a significance, each of us has a sound, and when we bring our sounds together, it creates a symphony. And, and I think as music educators, when we can start seeing that there's parallels between this, 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 this thing that we teach called music and this very thing that we experience called life, then it transforms everything. So my mission is to help folks discover their sound, their unique personal significance, and, and to give them the tools to develop that resilience. And I call that keep on going. Uh, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that as it goes on. But when you can have the significance and the resilience, then it allows you to make a difference and experience this thing called life in, in an amazing way, an amazing way. Well, maybe, maybe that's the answer to another one of the big challenges that we're hearing with music teachers right now, which is, you know, this isn't what they signed up for, nah. right? This is, yeah. it's how do we get back to loving our work when our work feels so different from what we wanted to get into and talk to me more about how do we find our sound? How do, is it something that we find? Is it something that we create? And can that help us be more resilient through this time where we're doing things that we didn't intend to ever have to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really believe that this is a pivotal moment. And I got a good friend of mine that always reminds me. She says, hey, in this season, 
don't panic, just pivot. And, and for so many of us, we're trying to go back to the old norms. But I remember as a kid uh, growing up, I remember watching TV and nobody knew what the Internet was. I, I'm I'm just I'm just young enough to where people think he should be tech savvy, but I'm old enough to be with the boomers where I don't know what's going on. And, and growing up in school, we had encyclopedias and we heard about this thing called the information age, the information superhighway. And we talked about it and got excited about it. Well, what's here now? It's, it's not a big deal. But I would challenge folks to consider this. If you're of that age, then then with that same exuberance and excitement that we anticipated the information age, I need us to understand now we're in the innovation age. And innovation sounds amazing and it sounds glamorous and it feels like unicorns and rainbows should just be popping up all over the place. But innovation, innovation stinks because at the end of the day, innovation is change and we're creatures of habit. And none of us just love change. Some embrace it better than others, but at our core, we're all creatures of habit. So to answer your question, I think it, 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 it focuses on us having a shift in our perspective seeing the new normal as an opportunity. Now, why do I say that? Because every time I talk with somebody, they keep talking about the crisis. And at the end of the day, uh, crisis is not negative or positive. Matter of fact, if you look up the derivative of the word, crisis is actually a derivative of a word that is much like the word sift. And I'm, I'm a little country boy from a little town down here in Louisiana. And in the summers, I didn't have some breaks. You, you woke up early in the morning with grandma, you went and picked pears, you picked figs, you cut people's grass and you picked jelly you know, uh, berries. I mean, she made preserves and jellies. So I watched her in the kitchen a lot. And she had this thing, this contraption called a sifter. You, you ever, you ever, have you seen a sifter? Are you familiar with the sifter concept? Yes, yes. Okay, so some people don't know. Like the new, some of the new school folks, they don't know. I tell them this is the first app. You have to do application. You actually have to put some work to it. And you turn that little sifter and, and, and on the bottom of it, they had like almost like this chain meal or whatever. But you put powder, you put baking soda, you put different things in it. And in our case, sometimes we pick these uh, uh, berries and different things. You might have a twig or two in there. So, and sometimes sugar clumps up. Well, the thing about a sifter is whatever is clumpy, whatever is foreign, whatever doesn't belong, most importantly, whatever is not processed can't come through. The only things that come through the sifter are the refined process things. And it's from those things that we can make whatever it is that ultimately we want to enjoy. And the same is true of 2020. I have chosen to look at this year, not as a crisis, but a sifting. And when you see that, then you understand every opportunity is another opportunity for another opportunity. So each and every day I wake up and I ask myself, what's my sound? And I do a sound check. And sound is an acronym. S stands for see yourself beyond yourself. See, see, the ways to win in music have to do with all the non-musical things. I think any great educator would know that. You watch any successful music educator, they are masters, they are gurus of the administrator, of the personal, of all the things that have nothing to do with music, and then the music becomes easy. So for me, one of those non-musical things I do personally is I make a point to see myself beyond myself. And that's hard, because I'm selfish. I'm just like anybody else. It's human nature. I want to I want to self-preserve. But I found the greatest rewards have been when I've been able to take my perspective off myself and put it on that person that matters, be it a student, being a parent, being an administrator who's going, by the way, they're going through difficult times as well. Having that compassion is a critical component and operating with gratitude. That's seeing yourself beyond yourself, which leads me to the next one. Oh which stands for operate in optimism and excellence. That's another gratitude driven point. I wake up every day with two words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you is my sunrise. No matter how dark something is, I promise you, if you say thank you and watch this, we're going to put the secret sauce on it. Say thank you and put a smile on your face. If you say thank you and put a smile on your face, it changes everything in a moment. I'm telling you that 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 attitude of gratitude changes your entire perspective. So each and every day, I'm not I'm not faking it till I make it. And you may be at a point where you have to do that. Hey, start somewhere. I tell them, hey, fake it till you make it if you have to. Some folks say faith it till you make it. Hey, that's great. If you got a belief in something larger than yourself or you meditate or whatever, hey, do your thing. Faith it till you make it. But watch this. I've done all those things, but I got another one. Face it till you make it. But that comes with the consistency and the intentionality. Each and every day, trusting the process allows me to know, hey, just like when I pick up this saxophone, I don't have to cross my fingers and hope and wish it works. I've got a process that I trust in, that I believe in, that allows me to face the situation and make it. That's why I say you got to know your sound. U stands for utilize all available resources. Uh, I've, I've created a planner 
and a coaching system that I help educators with. And it allows them to step into a situation with a plan because each and every day we have an opportunity to go to a destination called success, but you need a GPS. You need some guidelines, some procedures, some systems, not just in your classroom, but in your life as well. It's amazing. We create lesson plans, but we don't have life plans. And in this season, we've learned now more than ever, we can't rely on the old paradigm, on the old practices. We're going to have to sit down with intention and create those new norms to meet the new norms that are facing us right now called 2020. So each and every day, I'm looking for opportunities, things I can utilize and use as tools and resources each and every day to help me maximize and elevate uh, my experience. And not just mine, but the experience that I'm creating for my students. And then N stands for nourish relationships. And that's why opportunities like this are so important. Being able to collaborate and connect with like-minded individuals. And watch this, sometime like-minded individuals may not be the best thing because if I'm on a low point, maybe I need to find somebody with a higher perspective, somebody with a little bit more positive outlet so that I can, I can take on some of those characteristics. So we need to be mindful about the circles we keep. And I would tell folks this, look at your five folks that you have in your circle. If you're the smartest and the best person in that circle, you need to revisit the circle. I'm not saying defriend everybody or unfriend everybody, but I am saying, you know, make a point to reach out to those people that are going to help stretch you because when your capacity is expanded, then you're in a position to receive more. But a lot of times we're wanting gallon size significance and, and success, but we only got pint size capacity. Don't be afraid of the stretch. And your circle is that those individuals that provide you the opportunity to grow and go to that next level. And lastly, is, is my mantra that I live by. You, you can see it right there. It's, it's D, don't stop. Keep on going. And I think that that's what we need more than ever. And, and we sometimes have to be our own cheerleaders in this season. If we don't make that intention to be the very thing that we have been for our students, if we don't do that for ourselves, then we will crumble under the pressures of this year. So those are just my, that's, that's my little personal sound check. And I'm saying that today because so much of what we need to do to win in this season has no thing, <laughs> I'm gonna say it again, no thing to do with music. And it's got everything about being that individual or that type of individual that probably first inspired us to go into the profession. Because when you think of your favorite teacher, rarely do you think about a lesson plan or anything that they taught as much as you think about the way that they made you feel. And when you can create that type of mindset that allows you to go into a classroom and to be the sound to change their world, then it takes you away from a to-do list and it gets you focused on a to-be list because Shakespeare had it wrong. To be or not to be is the answer. It's not the question, it's the answer. And I think that that's why we're human beings and not human doings. So this whole sound check thing is just an opportunity for you to check your being and to ask, am I bringing the significance necessary to help develop the resilience, not only in myself, but in everybody that I'm charged over in the classroom? So I love all of that so much, <laughs> but, but where do we even start? Like if we're in this holiday break right now, which is when we're recording this, what can we do to help us identify those areas or to create our sound to help us get through? If, if we're starting to think maybe this teaching thing isn't for me and maybe, it, you know, by the end of the year, I don't know if I'm going to want to come back. Of course, we want you to come back. You wouldn't have chosen this profession if you didn't want to do it. And just because it's a big challenge right now doesn't mean it will be forever. When we, when we face challenges, and you said this so beautifully, but I look at it, challenges really are just opportunities for growth. We, and there's so many of them right now that changing our mindset from, you know, this thing didn't work or it's not working into how can I make this work? Well, you know, when I run into to challenges, which I do all of the time, right? I'm building new systems. I'm building new, new things all of the time. And I, I reached the point where I've done something wrong or there was a mistake. And I don't see that as anything negative anymore because now it's, it's a different, like now I've learned what not to do, right? <laughs> now I've learned what yes. not to do. Yes. And, and if you can see it as, you know, that there's either success or there's a lesson, not that there's a success or a failure. Yeah. Yeah. They completely I, I, changes. It changes everything. You know, I, I, I tell, I tell young, young educators that come in that, that, that student teach with me, Hey, nobody's expecting to be perfect. We're just expecting you to progress and to be processed and process is never easy. It's a refinement, right? We live down here in the Bayou state and there's a lot of refineries. We have a, 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 a very strong uh, energy uh, economy down here with petrochemical. And the thing about 
the, the refineries is things come in crude, they come in, you know, raw and, and through all these processes, they come out. But the great thing is they come out with greater value. So, so what we have to realize when we talk about the sifting and the processing is it starts with understanding that you're not at that point yet and it's okay. So, so understanding that there's no loss, there's only a lesson. Understanding there's no mistakes, there's only mistakes along the way. And that's where the true mistake happens, when you miss the take, miss the opportunity. And I finally tell folks this, look, it's simple. It's giving yourself the grace to be humanity on display. Nobody in this game right now has all the answers. I don't care who they are. They may have an abundance of answers, but nobody has all the answers. So, so take that burden, that pressure off of yourself to try to create this pristine perfect experience because it doesn't exist right now and understand that just like you said you can make failures just as long as you don't make the fail yours and when we understand that a failure does not mean that we have to hold on to it and put it in our pocket and go revisit every five minutes then that takes an incredible burden off of all of us today and and i want to encourage somebody right now the first thing that you can do is take time to dream again See, when, when kids come into my classroom, I always greet them at the door. And I may a lot of times I'll say, welcome to the band hall where all your dreams come true. And I'll say it with a smile. I have no idea what that means <laughs> most days, but it's not for me to know. Listen to what I said. I said, welcome to the band hall where all your dreams come true. Now, why do I say that? Because I want to get, and you can see some of them start thinking, oh, I never thought about it. What do I want to happen? I'm creating a, a, a spirit of expectancy with those kids. See, I got a kid that just gave up for math. I got a kid that just feels like a failure coming out of science. But when they get to my door, I want to let them know, hey, the slate is clean. Welcome to the band hall where all your dreams come true. But here's the problem. A lot of people are living this thing called life and they have no destination. And if you don't have destination, you don't have destiny. And if you don't have destiny, you don't have vision. You don't have dream. And I can't tell you how many educators I, I, I stepped to uh, in the course of a week that literally have no idea where this thing is going other than retirement. And if retirement is your dream, <laughs> then that's a nightmare. And I'm telling somebody here today, take some time on this break and begin dream building. Think of what, what do you want? What's your three big dreams? Your big, or you want to call them goals, whatever you want to call them. Your big three dreams in 2021. They can be music related or not. But whatever it is, I need you to have something that you're striving for. Because watch this, we wanna go from survival mode, from survive to thrive, right? But in order to get to thrive, sometimes you have to have something to strive toward. And so many folks are just living day to day or hour to hour, period to period. And that can be incredibly frustrating because you can't see the destination. All you see is the distractions and the dismay and the despair. But I'm telling somebody today, Get some dreams, about three things, no more than three, three big things. And then watch this, distill your dreams. Hey, in Louisiana, we, we say le bon ton roulet, let the good times roll. You go, you go to New Orleans, we're going to have a little beverage, we're going to have a little food, we're going to have a little fun. And there's a lot of distilleries down here. And, and, and a distillery, what it does is it breaks that thing down. And if you have a dream and you distill it, now you're positioning yourself to tie your daily actions to a dream that's bigger than any of the frustrations that can meet your way. See, I don't have any bad days. I'd go to work for free if I didn't have mortgage, if I didn't have miles to feed, if I didn't have a wife to, you know, to make sure that I support and, and, and keep safe and all that good stuff. If I didn't need money, I'd go to work for free. Why? Because what I'm doing is actually what I'm being. And my being is tied into my dream. So just because that song didn't work that day or just because all of a sudden they change picture day to the day of our dress rehearsal <laughs> and they start pulling kids out or all of a sudden when they change the master schedule, it doesn't defeat me. It doesn't discourage me, not because I'm so special, but because I keep my eye on the significance. So I think that that's where you start. You find where your big dreams are. You tie your daily actions into those dreams. And that's what allows you to develop the resilience, that ability to keep on going so that you don't lose your sound. Well, you preemptively answered my final question for you today, which is how hey. do we deal with change? Because that, that's what we are going through. But you're absolutely right that we get to decide. We get to tell our own story. And we get to dream as big as we want. 
and live within that dream and outside of that dream. And, and that keeps us going. A- any other tips for how do we just keep yeah. going when we are being met with more frustrations than ever? I think the answer is in our, in our subject matter. I think we need to realize all the answers are in music. I have learned so much about life from music. Um, you know, and when we think about discovering your sound and keep on going, as powerful as those things are, they're not the ultimate. I would say this, um, I went through a lot of pain in 2019. Um, what, what should have been the greatest year of my life, <laughs> ending with me finding out I was the Grammy Music Educator of the Year award winner for the following year, what, what should have been the greatest year of my life was actually the most painful year of my life. Seven funerals, I lost my mentor, my brother passed away. I lost my cousin who was my best friend. I lost her godmother, I lost her mother. All my mom's remaining sisters passed away. My, my, my cousin was brutally murdered, closed casket, go, uh, the, the week that I, I found out that I had won. And so as much as people look at the pictures from the Grammys, they don't, they don't always see the whole story. And, and I know for so many folks out there, there's parts that nobody sees, there's parts that nobody knows. Sometimes there's work, there's pain that doesn't always show, but it's in those things that the story is told. And I'm telling you this today because as, as cute as Keep On Going is, and you know, maybe as amusing as Discover Your Sound is, there's something greater that I didn't understand until I was processed by the pain. And I don't say that to be diminishing of anybody's loss or experience, but in as much as I lost that year, I think it prepared me for everything that would be lost in this year. And 2019 showed me that mm, my, 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 my son's fifth grade teacher would say it all the time. She'd tell the kids, I know this is tough, but you are too. And, and I'm going to say that to you as well. Things may be tough, but so are you. The kids would say, so am I. So, so whenever you're going through that tough spell, say things are tough, but so am I. Why am I telling you that? Because when you discover the sound, it's not just for you to play. It's not, it's, our, it's, music is a gift. So as we go through this thing called life, understand a gift is supposed to be given. And I think about this. We talked about our dreams, but having lost so many people last year, I had to go to funeral over funeral, funeral over and over again. And the eulogy became such a powerful testament to me in those closing months. It took on a new meaning. And for me, I understand now that we all are going to meet that time. You know, 10 out of 10 people die. I mean, and I'm not here to be a downer today. I promise you, I'm going somewhere with it. But I need you to understand when that time comes, I don't want it to just be about my sound, but I want my legacy song to be sung. What's your legacy song? It's the lyrics of your life. I hope the lyrics of my life, when that moment comes, somebody says, Mickey was here for us. Mickey inspired us to discover our sound, our significance. Mickey helped us with resilience and helped us to find a difference. Mickey helped us create a sound 180. Mickey, Mickey more than anything, was a great father. Mickey was a fantastic husband. He was a great son. These are the things I hope make up the lyrics to my song. So my question to you is, what is your legacy song? And waking up every day, being intentional and being consistent about who it is you are before anything that you do, being consistent about your being before you're doing sets the tone, not just for that day, but for your legacy. And I want to encourage somebody. We don't have to wait on legacy. Legacy is not in the past. not just something you read in a history book. Legacy is not just in the future, but it's in the precious gift. It's in the precious present, the here and now. So even in the midst of all this turbulence and all this unprecedentedness, we can still have a presentness. And I want to encourage folks to take time to consider what their life lyric is, because when you do that, now you have even greater significance. And when it comes to resilience, I embrace these challenging times because now watch this. When somebody goes through something difficult, you can say something greater than keep on going. You can say, I was there. I've been there. So I look at this opportunity as another opportunity to provide opportunity for somebody who needs it the most, maybe today or in the very near future. And uh, just remember, your sound will literally change this world, but only if you keep on going. You, you absolutely personify that too. I, 
I didn't want to bring it up, but you are in Louisiana where there have yeah. been storm after storm after storm this season. It's crazy. crazy. How, how, how are you doing? How are things there? And how do you, how do your students keep going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, I, I had no idea when I, 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 I began speaking this keep on going mantra, how, 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 how important, how significant, how relevant it would be to me personally in this season. Um, starting school, we were scheduled to start school in August and COVID pushed that back, which I think we all have experienced that to some extent. But then getting ready to start the second time, um, a hurricane strikes ground zero. I mean, it, it hit right our, right our community. Um, and it was devastating. I mean, we, we still have people that don't have utilities here. We still have people that don't have lights and internet. And for about six weeks, not one person in our entire community had the basic essentials. It was like a third world country. As the world went on about its business, we were in this, 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 this stalled uh, place. And it was difficult to see people have lost their homes. My students have been displaced. Many students um, I keep in touch with via email, but, but I have not seen since, uh, since having lost them on Friday the 13th of March. Uh, to add insult to injury, we, we ended the year abruptly with COVID. And there are some students I never got to give that, that, that significant goodbye to. And, and I said that because it hurts, but most and more so after going through one hurricane, I didn't even know this was possible. The second hurricane came through six weeks later and hit in the same place, only five miles apart. Like it's like lightning striking twice. That doesn't even, I've never even heard of that happening before, but I'll tell you this. It's funny how life, um, it's just full of lessons. My very first year teaching, we had two twisted sisters hit Louisiana, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. So I'm no stranger to trial by fire, trial by storm. And uh, in this season, I just leaned back on those prior experiences to remind myself that this too shall pass. And I've taken on a, um, a, a fake scripture, if you will. I just made one up. Uh, I'm sorry if I offend somebody with that, but uh, this is Mickey 316. Bless it. Blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. That's, that's just made up. I just made that one up. And that's what I'm living by in this season. So uh, I'm here to tell you today, this is not just a little cute phrase that I coined. This is something that I'm living. And most importantly, this is something that we all can live with and live through that uh, the next steps can absolutely be the best steps and your next sounds can be the best sounds. I'm living testament. I'm living proof. If you don't believe it, go Google it. The storms are hitting, but watch this. We out here like Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump. We still here, we striving, we strong, and we gonna make it through. And I know you will too. And that's why community is so important. I thank you for the opportunity to just share and to provide this platform, hopefully to encourage somebody because that's what uh, Sound 180 is all about. And that's what, that's what my mission is all about in this season, just to, to elevate educators to that whole new level and remind them that they have that significance and to provide that for others. Well, it's, it's my pleasure to, to you know, I've worked hard to build this platform and it's just such a joy to be able to bring on people like you to, to this stage and, and provide you with the, the opportunity. Well, I want to invite folks if, if, if they want to connect, um, I'm, I'm easy to connect with. Uh, I think you'll attest it wasn't, wasn't hard to find me. Uh, but if you want to know more and you want to connect or, or uh, I've even had some folks that say, Mickey, we'd love to have you come into our district and provide professional development. Because honestly, how, how tired do we get of like math and science and English teachers, no disrespect, but guys, they come in, they do the in-service and the music people sitting back just like, I think music, music needs to, to, to provide some value. And, and I've been blessed and honored to be able to go in and, and provide professional developments and, and, and just encouragement on many different levels. So I encourage folks to go to mickeysmithjr.com and find out more today, it's Mickey Smith Jr. So easy to remember, it goes like this. M-I-C-K-E-Y-S-M-I-T-H-J-R.com. Let's connect, let's stay connected so that we keep on going in this season. That's amazing. And I'll, and I'll have all your links in our, in our show notes too. So <laughs> thank you, thank, you. thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and with Mickey. I know how incredibly valuable your time is, especially now, and I am honored that you would share it with me. I hope that you've enjoyed this conversation and are feeling changed. Remember to share this episode with your friends and colleagues. Many probably could really use it. 
Thank you for sharing, following, and rating this podcast. It really does make a difference to help people find and access all of our mentorship and information. Until next time, my friend, keep teaching on. Thank you.